Hi well, g'day folks and welcome back to another fish on video. In this one I'm going to show you how I catch flathead on these two lures. The double clutch, die with double clutch and a Z-Man Minnow soft plastic. So I'm going to run over where to use them and how to use them. Oh yeah fish on baby! Welcome back to another video. Firstly, thank you for the support on the last one. Really appreciate it. Glad you like it. I enjoy making them, so thank you very much for your support. So on this video, I'm going to run over some whiteboard diagrams and play some old and fairly recent footage of areas where I target flathead using this lure, which is a 75mm double clutch and a 3-inch Minos soft plastic. So please stick around. Uh, hopefully some really good information for you on where and when I use these soft plastics and hopefully you can uh, take these tips and put them to use in your own fishing and hopefully you catch some massive flathead. So let's get stuck into it. All right, so first of all, I'm gonna talk about a spot where I would use a 75 mil Daiwa double clutch. This is a very, very popular lure for flathead and one that I've been getting onto lately and it's caught me a whole heap of fish. And also a weedlessly rigged, so that's a 1 8 TT chin locks jig head and a three inch Z-Man minnow soft plastic. So I'm gonna show you an area where I would throw these different rigs. So this is a little spot that I fished last week um, at Lake Tyres. So what we have is a small island. It's pretty much in the middle of the main channel. And land comes around here, like so. So this is all land. And then you've got this island. So around the one edge of this island, we've got, there's a lot of grass and reeds actually on the island. There's a lot of water in the system, so it's kind of pushed up onto this island here. And there's a lot of grass and a lot of thicker grasses that have, that have grown on this side of the island. So then what we've got is a broken sandy and weedy bottom, which is perfect for flathead. Um, now, what that does is it's about two metres depth here, and then there's a slow, gradual rise up to half a metre, which is pretty much on the first drop off from those reeds on the island. The bottom structure, so when, when we're fishing, when we're especially targeting predator fish, structure is key, whether it's boats, pontoons, weed beds like we've got here, um, rocky walls, any, anything that's classed as structure is really good for fish. I especially love weed for flathead because the weed holds an abundance of food, whether it's shrimp, prawns, little bait fish, uh, little sandworms as well. Uh, this really entices the flathead to sit in these prone positions. So what we've got off this edge of the island, so we've got a 0.5 of a metre and then it drops down and the water was quite clear uh, through the middle of the day. You could see the bottom and it was this beautiful, all these bits of green is all the weed and then in between over oh, here is all sand, so perfect, perfect ambush spot for flathead. So what I did is I boated up, pretty much positioned the boat on the two metre mark, and then I could put a cast in around here, all the way along this side of the island here. Now what I was using was this. So this is the 75 millimeter Daiwa double clutch in laser AU color. So you can see there, it's a very uh, natural bait fish color. I know there's a lot of garfish and a lot of mullet in lake tires. So this natural color is beautiful, got that beautiful shine you can see there. Really, really stands out as a natural bait fish, even with the, with the, the bib on the front you know, you look at a garfish, it's a very slender bib, and they've got that big beak, so that's perfect. So I thought I'll go natural color. Seven, I chose a 75 mil, 
because in this depth of water here, the 95 mil model is just dives down too deep. So, you know, you cast out the 95 and you pretty much, every time you just get snagged up straight away. So this size was diving down to about one and a half meters. Um, the higher you hold the rod tip up in the air, the shallower these will dive. And then if you put the rod tip right down by the rod and start ripping it, then these will dive down, I reckon be beyond two meters because I was getting a little bit of weed. So what I was doing is casting these, trying to get them as tight to the edge of the island as I possibly could, taking up the slack, so winding a couple of times, and then I just rip, and then just let it sit there. Now the beautiful thing with these lures is they suspend, so they don't rise up and they don't sink to the bottom, they suspend where they are, which is amazing for targeting predator fish. So I cast it straight to the island, ripped it down, and just let it sit there five, six, seven, eight seconds, and then just gave it another couple of jerks and wind and just let it sit. Uh, when you can actually see these weed beds in the day, just try and target the weed edges and just let it sit on the edges of the weed edges or above, you know, and the flathead was sitting on the sand pretty much next to the weed patches. So just a little bit more detail on the lure. So there's 75 mil lung, this is the natural color. Uh, so this one goes down to about two meters in depth depending on how you work it and how high you hold your rod tip in these lures so there's a special design so the design is that they minimize noise there's no actual ball bearings making a racket and a rattle what there is is a piece of wire that runs through the center and then there's like a cylinder shaped weight and that transfers from the back to the front so when you're casting you look at these and go that can't be very aerodynamic in the cast but what it does is when you're casting the ball bearing the little weight sits down on the rear of the lure so you punch it out so it punches out nice and straight like that it doesn't go spiraling through the air it punches out in a straight line like an arrow so these cast a mile and then what happens is when the lure hits the water it sits like that so that weight all the weight transfers to the front and then as soon as you twitch, it, it dives down fairly deep straight away and then you can pause it. So the design of these, they're $25 each, but the design is absolutely amazing and I can't get enough of them at the moment. They're just an absolutely fantastic lure. They will catch you flathead. <clears throat> so yeah, just go back to the diagram, punching out a lung cast, take up the slack of the line on the cast and just give it a twitch. Just give the rod a quick flick like that and it'll dive it down and just let it sit there because that gets the attention of anything within you know probably a five or six meter radius and give them time to work work over to it and then give it another flick flick and then just let it sit there again and nine times out of ten we were getting whacked by flathead or brim you know brim love this size so you can if you're targeting flathead you get the bonus of catching some beautiful brim as well so in these areas so that's the first one so if I wasn't getting anything fairly tight to within that one and a half meter range of the island, I then threw, I then threw a weedlessly rigged minnows. So this is a three inch Z-man minnows. This is in a calico candy. And what the idea of this is, is if the double clutch isn't quite getting to the depths when you're coming further out from the boat. This soft plastic, you can pretty much cast it straight back into all of these areas and just give it a hop. Now let it sit on the bottom, hop, sit on the bottom, hop, sit on the bottom. And then what I was also doing is working, working these soft plastics parallel to the boat. So along that two meter and back from the boat as well in three meters so with my shallow diving lure i was covering pretty much the first one and a half meters and then i was putting that down and covering the deeper two to three meters with the soft plastic just to get down to the bottom so there's two lures covering the same area 
uh, just depending on the depth. On this side, there was a lot of shallow weed on this point right here. You know, you're talking a meter of water. And then as we came down to the right side, this was very shallow and there was a lot of brim. As soon as I pulled up to this island, there's a snag. So that's a tree that was probably a metre under the water and there's a lot of little brim up to 25 centimetres swimming around on these flats as well as garfish and other things like that so what I did is I put the boat here using my double clutch 75 mil I put a cast out into pretty much the right hand side of this tree into a deeper water. So after this point, it gradually dropped down deeper and deeper. And I think it was about four meters about here. But there was a nice step up here to shallow water. So that transition from shallow to deep was where I put a few casts in. Now on the second cast, I pretty much punched it out to the right hand side of this tree right against the bank and then I twitched same thing twitched the lure down twice twitched it again and then I hooked a flathead so that was a 71 centimeter very chunky healthy flathead that was sitting directly on that drop off so that initial drop off from the island where it went from half a meter to a meter she was just sitting there waiting for bait fish to come piling off the uh, off the shallow water. Just about hooked. Yeah, that's a good fish. That's what we're after. Jerk boat flathead. <laughs> yeah, boy. There she goes. Amazing. What a creature. And then I moved the boat all along the edge, targeting all along this edge till it became shallow again over here. And I picked up a 44 centimeter brim 
uh, halfway along off a snag, which is my PB black broom. So that's that's another great spot as you can you know if you've got deep water like out where the boat was over here was about four meters so it's fairly deep so these lures are no good as soon as they get past a meter or two meters from the bank these lures aren't working effectively because they're not getting close enough to the bottom for flathead then you can throw these in so while you're fishing this this side of the deep water here Pick up another rod or change your lure over to your wheelless rig. Same again, cast it straight out into the island's edge. Let the slack line, hop it, let it sink down to the bottom, keeping this plastic in contact with the bottom and work all of that deep water. So that's two lures working different water column, different depths, different water columns. All right, so the next terrible diagram is when we were fishing Barry and I fish Malacuda and we were finding flathead sitting on uh, rock walls so what we've got here is a terrible drawing and so this is the land and their trees and off the bank we were finding that there was a lot of uh, rock uh, it was like yellowy kind of sandstone so that squiggly stuff there is meant to be rock so we've positioned the boat at four meters in depth and this gradually went up to 0.5 of a metre, pretty much directly off the rock. So a lot of this rock was underwater. So that's the bank there. We're casting our lures on next to the bank. And there was a lot of rock directly underneath. Now what we were finding is the flathead was sitting directly off that rocky drop off. So around here. So around here, this is where we're finding the flathead all along here so what what we were doing is just fishing standard jig heads with a three inch minnows so that's a 3-0 hook on a one quarter inch jig head and we were catching fish but we were getting snagged up there's a bit of timber in here you know timber debris from the trees and and big rocks and things like that so what we did once again, this colour was the standout colour of the day, chartreuse. This is just an example on the jig again, on the chin locks jig head. Is What we should have done is fish these, uh, a lightly weighted jig head, and probably move the boat, because a lot of fish were coming in the first two and a half metres. So I probably would have moved the boat closer to shore and fished three metres the first three meters and cast out more towards the bank this way and this way so move the boat here so instead of covering the depths move the boat closer and work more of an angle this way so i should have used these jig heads because they're weedless so the hook hook pops out just like that sits in the plastic so that would have enabled us to cast right on top of the rock a couple of hops and then into the danger zone and then back to the two meters where the boat would have been so that's another way where you can use these if you've got any rocky walls rocky ledges um, like we had that day in Malacuta, use the weedless rig chuck them on top of the rock and just give them very gentle hops back until you get them into the danger zone and get clear of all that rock Shows, doesn't it? Yours is far out, mine was close in. Yep. It's gone for the net <laughs> immediately. Ah. Ah, uh, flat it. What is it? Flat it. He's not going to net it for me, but he's gone for the net. <laughs> I didn't think it was coming in that quick. Yeah. Funny baby. Still a good hit, but. <clears throat> yeah. Either way. Right on the bank. Ooh, this is just not on. That's slightly better, I reckon. 
Better get off that bank there. That was literally on the hop. Ooh. Ooh. This one's a bit better. Not much better, but. Geez, straight away, bang. Jump chartreuse. Yeah, I'm gonna have to change. Can't do this. It's got a bit of weight, this one. Ooh, it's coming alive. Don't do that to me. To my I'm on a really light drag. Get ready with that net berry. Yep. Where are we? No any here. Uh, this has got a bit of weight. Little bit of weight. Not lots of weight. This. Let's pop lock us there a little bit. I can't lift him up. There he comes. He's a, dark, he's a dark one, isn't he? Yeah. Oh, he's a big. 60. Yes. Oh no, I dropped him. <sighs> he's great. Get him in the boat, Barry. <laughs> I was trying to get the water right. out for him, mate. Don't worry, worry about it. the water. It's going to be, yeah. be 32 degrees, for God's sake. Let's rewind some of these videos when I said, <laughs> Barry, on water. my jacket. <laughs> Cheers. <laughs> in winter. <laughs> Here's look. Beautiful flathead. 62 centimeters. Let's get her back. Whoa, ow, bit me. Oh, look, savage. See you later. All right, so this is another place that we fish quite a bit, and just another place where you can actually target flathead. So, what we've got is the main river comes up this way. So this is the main river here and then as you come up to this bend there's a big sandbar you can actually see it if the tides if the entrance is open then the tides are low you can actually see this big sandbar here so what happens is it, is it forks off goes up to this little feeder creek here and all along here is a rocky wall and then the sandbar kind of comes out. This kind of comes out on a point as well here. So pretty much on this point, you cast. So if you set your boat up about here, you're putting cast onto this point, as close to that point as you can, and hopping back off. So. Where we normally got the boat, you probably cast it into say 0.5, hopping down, one meter, two meter, three meter by the time you get to the boat. So that's a beautiful sandy drop off, you know, so you're casting up onto the ledge, hopping it down, these soft plastics. That's, uh, that's a normal rigged standard jig head, three inch minnows. These will catch at any size flathead. And what we've got with this point is there's a little feeder creek. So you've got a lot of bait fish up in this shallow creek here. And if the entrance is open and it's tidal, all of the flow is coming back down these creeks and pushing bait fish that's gone up there with the high tide. As soon as the tide turns around, you've got the bait fish and all the food and everything being pushed back down across that sandbar, which then the flathead just sit there ready to ambush all of the bait and food that's coming down so that's a perfect spot you got the feed from the river a feed from the creek a beautiful sand spit which is perfect for flathead also along this other bend here where you got that flow so you got that beautiful flow there's a nice two meter drop off pretty much runs all the way down the river here so you can cast you put the boat into the middle i put the boat somewhere here 
and then put some casts up onto this ledge and then hopping back down we caught some flathead there as well so yeah you need anywhere where you got feeder creeks you gotta think food you gotta think bait and you gotta think of ambush spots so sand spits for ambush it's flathead will dig the cells in the sand wait for that bait fish to come over the head zoom up bank crunch it and these little feeder creeks and these rivers are absolutely perfect place for that Fish on? Right on that drop off, yeah? Yep. Beautiful. That's what they should be doing. He's got a bit of weight about this one. He's, I can see him look. And that jobby. Oh yeah, he's alright. He's a 50, isn't he? Jesus, he's heavy. I oh, know, it's heavy, isn't it? Oh, Jesus. <laughs> Lift the net. Imagine with a meter in it. Have to the end <laughs> There's a moon. Look. Yep. Another one again. The other side or Same this side? Push right there. Yeah. All right, pistol. <laughs> well done, my son. So are you just picking them up right here, right off this just drop off as you get hit, hit the dark water. Three corners. Yep. Bang. Having fun, Pistol? <laughs> so another one that we had was this little area. So what we had was a channel. So this is the main river here. The same river as the last diagram. And then it went off into this narrow channel, probably six meters wide. And then it went up and into this really big shallow lake from one meter to two meters of depth. So what we found uh, when we fished the run out tide, so all of the flow was coming back out down this channel. On this corner, so the land came around here, there's a bit of weed, like reeds and things like that. And then there's a little bit of uh, weed on the bottom of the, the bed. There was a big massive sandbar all the way along here. So what we were doing, is positioning the boat on the edge of that sandbar and flicking casts in here and the depth was probably I don't know all the way to like 0.2 and then one meter two meter three meters so that's the depth so you've got that beautiful sandbar underwater out in the channel you're talking probably five meters um, so you've got that beautiful sandbar and it was nice and clear um, little tiny bits of weed which was good but a lot of it was clear so we fished look a lot of ink on it now um, fished the standard you get three inch minnows and i believe munro's uh, 3.75 inch paddle tails very similar and we were just throwing them up onto this shallow, hopping them back down that drop off. You imagine it's coming down that drop off and the flathead is just sitting there with their face into the flow. So flathead will face the flow because that's the direction where all the bait and all the food's gonna be coming from. So all along here in the channel on the edge of this sand spit, we were getting a heap of flathead off there. They were just sitting there ready for meal time. So bit of weed once again, that source of food that flow and the source of food that's going to be coming down there on the run out tide, um, you can guarantee there's going to be flathead in spaces like that. So another spot where you can use your double clutch. If I went back there, this is ideal. You know, you can get right up and flick these from half a meter, twitch them all the way along these sand flats and that'll catch you a lot of flathead as well. So that's a place where you can use the double clutch lure and the soft plastic. Obviously, if you're fishing that very edge of that drop off where it drops down to the four or five meter mark, you're probably using your soft plastics because these won't get down deep enough and the flathead are always going to be on the bottom. So you've got to make sure you can get that lure down to the bottom. So that's another perfect ambush spot. And um, yeah, I'll show you the video now for that spot. What we want? 
Yeah. Oh, fish on. You actually go. swam up there. Wow. I got it right on the bloody thing. You swam up to get it. They're right on the edge of it. You actually, yeah. <laughs> that was on the light bit. And he <laughs> swam up to get it. I felt him. How mad is that? No? What was that thing? It's only three inch. <coughs> Bloody brim. Can you believe it? Oh, I just had another one. Oh, did you? Bloody brim pistol. <laughs> well done. Well done. <laughs> there we go. Three inch. Paddle tail, smashed by a little third, probably 25, 26 centimetre brim. Get in a minute. Yeah, there we go. First cast on the Munros, baby, yes. Flatfish. Now I'm going to get a picture. Yeah, just so I can make sure I get a picture of the lure. Oh well, that net's bloody heavy, eh? Okay, well that's a wrap up. Thank you very much for watching that and I hope you've got something from this video, whether you're a new uh, fisher with lures or whether you're an experienced angler. Hopefully this, the diagrams and the methods and uh, You've got a little bit more about these lures and you can go out there and fish them with confidence yourself. Um, I guarantee if you do fish these areas uh, and use the lures as I've explained them, you will catch some fish uh, eventually. And um, yeah, I've, I've been lure fishing for about two years and I've um, really learnt a lot by being out on the water. So get out there, throw the lures in, in the locations that I've showed you and hopefully you get onto some big massive flathead or big giant ormus brew. Thanks for watching Tight Lines and I'll catch you on the next video.